The eighth major Resident Evil game is finally here with Village. But unlike other Resident Evil games in the past, this one has a great deal of mystery surrounding it, especially when we thought everything to do with the Winter family was wrapped up in Seven. For months now, people have been scraping the internet for anything that Capcom have released to the public, from character shots to trailers and, well, Chris seemingly turning evil, unloading lead into Mia's face, and then just saying, Sorry, Ethan. And that's only the beginning of the game. Diving deeper, we have four lords and a region of mystery which all leads to Mother Miranda. So as best we can this soon after launch, let's dive into this game's story and the ending. And of course, major spoilers throughout for Resident Evil Village and the rest of the series. I'm Ben Roy from WhatCulture.com and this is Resident Evil Village, story and ending explained. Number 10, what happened to Mia Winters? Now for all the pain and suffering she's gone through in the past two games, Mia isn't as innocent as you think. She's a former member of the Connections, a crime syndicate involved with biochemical research, money laundering, murder, and a whole bunch of horrible acts. But her life changed forever when she became the caretaker of Evelyn. Evelyn being created from samples of the mold and DNA of Eva, Mother Miranda's long dead daughter. Though Evelyn was able to control the mold, the bakers, and Mia, she was considered a failure. That was, until Rose was born. This resulted in Mother Miranda kidnapping Mia and experimenting on her after they moved to Europe. And whilst all this was going on, Miranda took the place of Mia in Ethan's home as an identical copy, though with a shorter temper. There's nothing wrong with my memory. Mia is eventually rescued by Chris, letting her and Rose go back to some form of normality, though both will probably always have part of the mold with them. After this game, Mia's hand doesn't really feel totally played, and there's sure to be more revelations to come in future games. Number 9. Lady Dimitrescu and her daughters One of the four lords of the region, Lady Dimitrescu rules from her castle. And being one of the four lords, this means she's one of the more successful experiments of Miranda. Though Dimitrescu was close to being a suitable vessel for Miranda's daughter, Eva, who has long been dead. Though thanks to a hereditary blood disease, Miranda wasn't satisfied. And this blood disease was the reason Dimitrescu had to keep consuming blood. <sighs> You know, like classic vampires from folktales. But thanks to the experiments, Lady D had accelerated healing. But just as Miranda predicted, this went unstable as soon as it wasn't looked after. And Lady Dimitrescu went from a nine foot tall woman to a humongous monster. As for her three daughters, Bella, Daniela, and Cassandra, they were created by Lady D and took on different abilities of their own. Namely, disappearing into a swarm of insects and then reconstructing themselves elsewhere. This form being why they couldn't get too cold, which could also be mistaken for staying out of the sun. Once they were exposed to the cold, unlike Lady Dimitrescu, they became weak and couldn't regenerate, therefore leading to their demise. Number 8. Carl Heisenberg and his plans The other one of Miranda's almost perfect vessels for Eva, Carl Heisenberg gained quite unique abilities of his own. Thanks to the Cardo Parasite, Miranda described him as having electric organs, much like an electric Ray. All tied up to his nervous system, Heisenberg could now move metal at a flick of a hand. Going far into the realm of science fiction here, Heisenberg is basically this game's Magneto. With each encounter he goes on to show more of his powers to Ethan, trying to tempt the desperate dad over to his side. Because Heisenberg might look like a smug chap on the inside, but really he's got some deep rooted anger and wants to take down Mother Miranda. Creating an army of his own, Carl seeks to use Rose against Miranda, feeling that she doesn't know the difference between experiments and family as well as she stole his dignity from him and his body. Though to get Rose, Heisenberg must first go through Ethan. And well, that doesn't go too good, resulting in Heisenberg's death. Number 7. The relationship between the village and Umbrella Now it's no secret that Umbrella has something to do with this village, or at least what's going on. The company logo is everywhere, treated as a sacred symbol. It's eventually revealed that Mother Miranda and Oswald E. Spencer worked together in the past, with Spencer being a somewhat student of hers. So with that revelation, it seems like Mother Miranda was the nucleus for the Umbrella Corporation, or at least what led to Spencer's idea. After finding one last letter from Spencer to Miranda, it seems like their ideals clashed and both split ways. And when I say split ways, I mean Oswald Spencer left in a hurry. He was but a mere human at that point, and Miranda was pretty much immortal. The letter itself has no date on it, but it does talk about Spencer finding the progenitor virus in Africa, which we can kind of guess means it's from the 60s. After this letter, it doesn't look like they ever spoke again, and maybe there was something more there than just a student-teacher relationship, as Miranda kept this letter and photos laying about. I've always Spencer split off because he wanted to change the world, whilst Miranda just wanted to bring her daughter back to life. Number 6. Chris Redfield's True Objective 
For years since the tragedy at the Baker family home, Chris and the Wolfhound squad have been trying to put an end to the mould, or at least find its origins, and investigate further into the connections, the crime syndicate responsible for Evelyn's creation, and the one Mia used to work for. During this time he was responsible for moving the Winter family over to Europe, and he kept a close eye on them, but at least in this time he gave Ethan combat training. Discovering that the village was hiding something, he along with his squad operated in the shadows, while Ethan relived the nightmare from before. Chris ultimately fails in protecting the family from Miranda, and doesn't reveal his true goal to Ethan for a long time. He's there to investigate Mother Miranda, and everything weird that's going on. Of course he finds out she's a bioweapon, and that the mould from Resident Evil 7 came from here. This is the origins of it all, probably all the evil in the series. After fighting an army of lichens and destroying the Mega My Seed, he eventually finds this out after discovering Miranda's lab, learning the connection between this place and Umbrella, as well as finding out the secret behind Ethan Winters from Mia. Number 5. Mother Miranda's Origins Other than what Ethan looks like, this is probably the greatest mystery in Resident Evil Village, more so because she's a completely new entity to Resident Evil, having no real prior mention for the most part. But just before she truly reveals her plot, Ethan can find some information from Chris, detailing what she did and what she can do. It turns out she infected herself with the Mutamycid. This granted Mother Miranda a number of abilities, with the most notable being mimicry. So basically she can take the form of anyone, and almost anything, even crows. Controlling her cells, she made herself look like Mia. So she was the one being somewhat executed in front of Ethan. But that wasn't the end, because she can make herself look like she's dead. After everyone thought she was dead, she resurrected herself, stole Rosemary, and killed half the squad. But for some reason, leaving Ethan behind. Number 4. Mother Miranda's Objective Unlike most villains in the Resident Evil franchise, Mother Miranda doesn't claim to want to take over the world. Oh, not yet anyway. But instead she just wants to bring her daughter Eva back to life. The daughter she lost a hundred years ago to the Spanish flu, and throughout all that time she had been experimenting on villagers and anyone she could get her hands on, trying endlessly to find a perfect vessel for Eva. And this was all made possible after the creation of the Cardo Parasite. Most of her testing resulted in lichens, but a lucky four became lords. Well, if you call that lucky anyway. But thanks to the events of Resident Evil 7 with Mia, Evelyn and Ethan, Rose was born and Mother Miranda has what she needs to bring back Eva. But in the end, a father's love prevails. Number 3. The Fate of Ethan Winters All Ethan Winters wanted to do was protect his family, and throughout the past two games, he kind of did that, though along the way he took a ton of punishment, but somehow managed to bounce back. And that's all because of what took place back at the Baker family home. After his showdown with Heisenberg, Mother Miranda finally reveals herself to him, in her truest form. But this doesn't go too well for Ethan. Mother Miranda literally rips out his heart and covers herself with his blood. Though it turns out she didn't kill him, because in a dream Evelyn tells Ethan he's been dead for years. But somehow he keeps coming back thanks to the mold. Yes, that's right, Jack Baker killed him all those years ago. And thanks to this infection he can reattach limbs and just come back from the dead. Mia even seems to be aware of this as she alludes to Chris before the camera cuts away. Being more mold than man now, Ethan was seen as another experiment by Miranda as she let him take care of all her failed experiments. Fighting back from the brink of death, Ethan defeats Mother Miranda and saves Rose. But it's all too late for him as his body starts to succumb to the mold. So he hands Rose to Chris and takes the detonator from his hands and eventually in classic Resident Evil fashion, blows up the area. Number 2. Rosemary Winters The daughter of Mia and Ethan Winters. In the opening of Resident Evil 8, Rose is seemingly kidnapped by Chris and everything only escalates from there. Apparently Ethan's the only one not aware of her special gift. But then again he didn't realise that he had a gift too and it takes care Characters like the Duke and Heisenberg telling him over and over again. Though when he comes to finally find Rose, turns out she's been cut up and put into jars, separated into four places by all the four lords. But after all the events discussed, she comes back instead of Eva. And from there after the credits, we find out what happened. Now all grown up, she looks to be in her mid-teens. On a bus with the book that her mum used to read to her, she's on the way to a graveyard. Visiting her dead father for his birthday, she's quickly interrupted by some secret service looking types. Though she very confidently lets him know that she could take him down, and that Chris doesn't even know everything she can do. So it doesn't look like she's being held captive, but more of a Sherry situation where she's being looked after in some respect. Though only time or the next game will tell what actually happens. Number 1. What's next for Resident Evil? 
Capcom have made it very clear that this sub-story of Resident Evil isn't over, but how it will continue is unclear. Will the franchise jump all the way into the future with Rose as she's growing up, or will we follow Chris as he investigates the BSAA? Because for some reason they were using bioweapons when they went out of their way for years to destroy them all. So that's two ways that Resident Evil 9 can go next. That or we get a sub-game. Another revelations maybe? And then there's all the characters still alive in the universe. We didn't hear from Claire, Jill or anyone really. The one thing we do know is that the father's story is finally over. And sometime down the line, his daughter will be entering the world of survival horror. And that's Resident Evil Village Explained. So did I cover everything or did I miss something out? Let me know down in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I've been Ben Roy Turner from What Culture, and you can follow me at Ben Roy Turner and follow us all at WCultureGaming. And until next time we step into Resident Evil, no more games.